So as we heard, Steve is a uh, high on Marvin Mims, who caught 30 or 35 passes. I think 35 was the number last year. Could certainly be utilized a lot more. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts about um, wide receiver distribution? Yeah, no, I think as, as a group, um, this group is much, much better than they were a year ago. I think you've got um, on paper, I think. I should preface that by saying on paper, you've got a lot of kids that really haven't haven't made a, a huge contribution to the to this team. So Marvin Mims is obviously the most explosive, the most um, has the most experience on, on this wide receiver core. So so you got a guy like him. I, I would be I would be shocked if he's not a thousand yard receiver this year. Just the amount of times that they're going to try to get get the ball in his hands, I think he'll be a volume. Um, receiver, you know, he's listed as a slot guy. There, they'll probably move him around, kind of depending on how that how the defense is is covering him, um, so to speak. And and so then you've got some other ones. You get you've got Theo Weiss right there. You know what? He, he's had an excellent summer, um, excellent fall camp. You know he's 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 listed as one of the starters um, at the wide receiver position as well. I think he's a guy that you could probably if he if he's anywhere near his twenty twenty form. You know, he's a guy that you could see seven, eight hundred yards receiving this year. Um, you know, six or seven touchdowns. Um, then you got um, Jalil Farouk, who completely ha- has been a just a a, a game changer in um, in fall camp and, and, and in scrimmages. And so he's my he's kind of my dark horse from a stat perspective, Mark. I think he's a guy that you could make an argument. You know, I think he's more physically imposing as a wide receiver out there than a guy than a, than a Marvin Mims. So um, you could make an argument where he could p- potentially be the leading receiver this, this year. If, you know, if there's much more attention um, placed on Marvin Mims with Farouk being more of a, um, you know, a relative unknown, at least nationally at this point. Right. But then you've got a lot of, a lot of guys at a supporting cast perspective. You've got, um, you know, you've got a couple of the transfers in LV Bunkley Shelton. You've got JJ Hester. You've got a couple of freshmen, um, and and Jaden Gibson and Nick Anderson to see, you know, to see how they. Then you've got the reliable Drake Stoops um, that's been out there. So um, you've got a, you've got a lot of depth there that maybe not necessarily that, that Oklahoma has had in the past, and and what appears to be quality depth now. Obviously, you know a bit of an unknown with the transfers coming in, and then the true freshmen. You know what kind, what what level of um, play that they get. I think Jaden Gibson is a guy that you can see maybe five, six hundred yards receiving, but I think he his his, his um, growth and his you know where he can help this team the most will probably be in in the end zone, red zone type situation. Could certainly see him um, being a big red zone target, seven or eight touchdown pass touchdown receptions this year for potentially Jaden Gibson. And, and I think Gibson's, you know, wide receivers an area where you, where you can see getting on the field, maybe a little bit um, sooner than some other positions as well. 